Alright guys, so let's talk about BRICS today and it's time to do an update. We have the Russians looking to reset the global food markets. The Chinese economy is also recovering and even mainstream media can't deny the facts much longer. Now the decoupling narrative sounds great but this is still the world's second largest economy. Unlike Yellen's view of the China threat where it's a zero-sum game, a recovery is good news for the whole world. This is a win-win scenario. China's industrial growth isn't to be feared but to be embraced. And finally, we have to cover a strategic battle for minerals. The US is on a resource grab for resources under the sea. China and Russia, they are working together to counter this. This maritime border dispute is only going to get worse. And let's start with Russia first. Putin wants to reset the grain market. Good news for BRICS and awful news for the West. He's pushing for BRICS grain exchange that would allow buyers to purchase directly from producers. And this idea is gaining momentum across the block. The problem with the current system today is the control of prices. While countries like Russia, India and China, they produce the most wheat, it's the West that influences prices. And they do it through the commodity exchanges like the COMEX in Chicago. It's really ridiculous if you think about it. Paper instruments controlling physical commodities. Russia's annoyed with this. The exchanges are beholden to speculators, and this includes hedge funds that trade derivatives. This has led to prices below the cost of production, which is something happening in all the commodity markets, from oil to gold. When you flood a market with a ton of paper contracts, you can collapse prices. Now, it's great for speculators, but it does hurt farmers, the actual people who do the work. By allowing buyers to buy directly from producers from bricks, there will be another center of power that can set food prices besides the COMEX. But this is just on the surface level. Putin wants to bring together the biggest producers of food in the world to form another kind of cartel. Think of this like another OPEC, but instead of oil producers, it's all about food, wheat and grain. And this is even more consequential than controlling the supply of oil. Food is an existential issue for everyone. Russia is trying to consolidate the commodity strength of BRICS to push back against the West. If we look at the top 10 wheat producers in the world, it's obvious why Putin wants a grain exchange. Over the last decade, the biggest producers are China, India and Russia. China is the biggest producer coming in at 17%, India at nearly 13% and Russia on par with the US at 8.4%. Just these three countries alone account for 38% of global wheat production that's enormous bargaining power in the global markets. While the West has the power of the financial system, BRICS has the ability to control the global commodity markets, oil, gas and grain, all these are controlled by the global south. And here's how staggering the numbers get. 42% of global grain production or 1.2 million tons comes from BRICS, just the original members alone. 40% of global consumption also comes from the block as well. So BRICS has leverage in both production and consumption. They have a big say in the supply and demand game. It's the same situation as OPEC, just copy and paste this towards food supply. Now, there are three scenarios where Russia and BRICS can use this grain exchange to disrupt the West. They can weaponize the food supply chain to accomplish geopolitical objectives. The first, of course, is to control the price of wheat. The value of any commodity can be influenced if you control enough supply and demand. For example, the Federal Reserve controls the value of the dollar through interest rates. When you raise rates, you make dollars much more expensive to acquire because there's a constant demand for dollars. When the Federal Reserve raises rates, it decreases supply because money flows to the US bond market. Investors can earn more by lending money to the US government risk-free. That in turn increases the value of the dollar in the open market. Its supply and demand control is the very reason why emerging markets had a big currency crisis two years back. OPEC's control of oil is another fantastic example. Since October, OPEC has taken away 6% of the world's crude supply by cutting production. Countries like Saudi Arabia and Russia coordinated a massive cut of 6 million barrels a day in total. And that sent oil prices from under $75 to over $87. That's a 16% increase. When you control supply and there's a consistent demand around, prices can fly to the moon in a hurry. OPEC decreased the supply of oil, a commodity that every country needs. Demand is inelastic, so prices went up. This is an existential resource that every country needs. There's no exception, no argument here. People can forgo everything except food. If BRICS decides to drop production together, the price jump could be insane. 
Now, another big advantage is Russia's ability to de-dollarize the world. If you can export more to global markets, you can dictate the terms of payment. And it doesn't take a genius to know that pricing won't be in the US dollar. Moscow is expected to export 56% of their 2024 wheat production. That's 6 points higher than its 5-year average of 48%. In contrast, exports from the US will fall to 39% from 50%. There's a big 11% drop that will cause America to lose market share. Just ask yourself a simple question here. When Russia steps in to fill the gap, do they prefer payments in dollars or other local currencies? They will likely take rubles or the Chinese yuan versus the dollar. Now, the idea here is to use their supply of grain to de-dollarize the world wherever possible. A BRICS grain exchange will accelerate this even further. If the majority of the world's exports and consumption comes from one single block, payment terms can be negotiated. So we must watch this development rather closely. It's another chink in the dollar's armour. Putin knows that the dollar can't be defeated in the debt markets, but when it comes to global trade and commodities, this is a point of weakness. China, for example, also controls the demand side of the equation. Since 2020, Beijing has been importing a ton of corn and wheat. It's a crazy jump from 20 million tons to over 40 million a year, a 100% increase. They are the biggest food importer in the world. As the middle class rises, this import demand will continue to stay high or even increase. A BRICS exchange would encourage China to buy more supply using the yuan, bypassing the dollar. I'll buy your wheat, I might pay even a little more, but I'll pay in the yuan, my local currency. So this move isn't just about securing food supply. The side effect is another move to de-dollarize global trade. As speaking of China, let's circle back to their economy. For many months now, we have heard of the collapse narrative. There are so many headlines that I can repeat them from memory. There's the real estate implosion, a decreasing population and the sanctions on Chinese tech. And let's not forget about the yuan crashing, foreign investment dropping and the stock market crash. Now, there's some truth to these claims. You can't argue with the numbers. Some of it, of course, is Beijing's own fault, like the real estate speculation. Others are deliberate attempts to contain China's growth. But the figures today tells us a recovery is already underway. The second biggest economy in the world isn't as fragile as CNN or Gordon Chang claims. China's factory activity expands for the first time in six months. Industrial activity in China has beaten economies' forecasts. It's not just manufacturing either. The demand for services is also growing. China's factory activity has expanded and it has left the contraction zone. For over a year, manufacturing PMI has been hovering under 50. China's manufacturing was stagnating and contracting, but the March number shows a big reversal. It has gone from 49 in February to nearly 51 in March. This is a big increase, especially if you consider the scale of China's manufacturing. It's bigger than either Japan or Germany, so an increase of that magnitude is very significant. And here's the interesting part. The new orders gauge increased even more. It went from 49 to 53. This acceleration in activity is coming from a big boost in demand. Even as economies are in recession and Biden is calling for decoupling, China's industries are growing. Exports are growing in China because Beijing is exporting deflation to the world. While the rest of the world is plagued by higher prices, inflation, China is grabbing more market share. Their products cost less and they are still making profits on them. The cost of production there is much lower. In January and February, Exports have risen by 7.1% to $528 billion. That's a big jump compared to a year earlier. And if this continues, we could be back in an upswing market for China. And a big thank you to our sponsor today, JM Bullion. Now, I've been buying gold and silver for over 12 years. And with the chaos in the global economy, having some gold is a smart idea to protect your wealth. If you live in the US, JM Bullion is one of the best and the most trusted places to get your bullion. First time buying gold, then GM Bullion has an awesome offer for you. You can buy a 1 ounce gold bar at 99.99% purity at the spot price. And this means no physical premium, which is the lowest price possible. And this is an amazing introductory offer that gold stackers can only dream of. GM Bullion is America's leading retailer in gold, silver, and other precious metals. They have over 350,000 customer reviews and an A rating from the Better Business Bureau. So take advantage of this deal today. It's limited to only one max per person or household. Visit the link below and get started on your gold stacking journey today. Beijing could really hit their 5% growth target in 2024 when Western economies like Europe face stagnation. 
It is important we dig deeper and understand the complexity of the Chinese economy. It is growing and collapsing at the same time. And what's important is the transition to overall sustainable growth. If we look at real estate, it's a nightmare scenario there. Sales have fallen by 46% in March, which shouldn't be a surprise. Developers like Evergrande and Country Garden, they are all imploding. And this makes people rather afraid to buy homes. For over 10 straight months, home sales have been dropping by at least 30%. That is going to push property prices down. And this implosion won't stop until the government says enough is enough. Western media is losing their minds because the biggest losers are the Western hedge funds that speculated like crazy during the property boom. And because President Xi refused a bailout, refused to give all the stimulus money, they're all underwater. They have lost a ton of money. However, the Chinese consumer is starting to recover. This is something that very few people are reporting on. And it tells us that pent-up demand is coming down the line. Compared to the US and the Eurozone, the Chinese savings rate have increased. Over the past two years, it has risen from 30% to 34% in China. In contrast, the savings rates of the West has been dropping. Chinese people are saving more to buy homes and as a precaution. So what happens when property prices continue to fall? You'll see Chinese consumers with a ton of cash they can use to either buy homes at a cheaper rate or spend in a greater economy. And this is good news for their economic growth. As China and Russia makes moves back home, they are also challenging the US globally. And this is a move to prevent US influence from spreading out of control where it matters the most, and that is the colonization of resources. China and Russia challenge America's claim to mineral-rich stretches of seabed. If this continues, Biden will lose the resource race in international waters. Under the UN law of the sea, countries they have the right to any resources in the sea or seabed floor within their economic zones and this can stretch up to 200 nautical miles off the coast. The US is surrounded by three oceans which brings to them a tremendous advantage in claiming resources, and this could be minerals or even oil and gas reserves hidden under the ocean floor. But what the US just did is making China and Russia unhappy, it's frustrating them. The US now claims a huge chunk of the sea bait. The State Department has redrawn the continental shelf map in a big resource grab. The claims are going to stretch well into the Arctic. From the map, it's obvious what's going on here. They have added a million square kilometers to their claims, and this includes the Pacific, the Atlantic, and as well as the Gulf of Mexico. But the main point of contention comes from the Bering Sea and the Arctic Ocean up north. This extends America's claims near Russia's landmass, so you can see why Moscow isn't really happy with this. Russia is in the region exporting LNG to the world, including China. The Arctic is also home to incredible reserves of oil and gas. The Bering Strait is also an important choke point in the Arctic trade route. If that falls under US control, in future conflicts, things can get really messy. The US can force blockades to stop Russian trade. There are big economic and strategic advantages in holding all these areas. According to the Polar Institute, this is a resource grab. It's US sovereignty over the seabed floor. And so whether it's seabed mining or oil and gas leasing, the US has control over this. It is announcing the borders of its ECS and will have sovereignty over those decisions. If a huge oil deposit is found, any company will need US approval to extract the oil. And the same goes for other resources like rare earths and minerals. If you want to mine it out, you need US approval once again. It's obvious that China and Russia doesn't want this to happen. The future belongs to countries with all the resources. And as the world decouples, if you want to build an independent economy, you'll need a ton of oil, you'll need a ton of gas and a ton of minerals. We just need to look at Europe here. Because they have neither, their economies are in very big trouble, especially when supply chains are collapsing. So this is a big battleground that we have to monitor. To counter this, Russia and China are protesting because the US has not ratified the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea which the US won't because they say it limits their own national security. It's not in their interest, so they won't recognize the law. The big powers are going to continue their resource grab around the world, and it's going to get ugly. The next big conflict will very well happen in the Arctic. Whoever controls the resources can influence the world, and this is one area where neither Russia, China, nor the US will give way to each other. This is an existential battle. So BRICS is starting to rise up here. We are witnessing deglobalization and the rise of a multipolar world. China and Russia are moving to dismantle the old world order. This won't be a smooth transition. 
And if BRICS does create a green exchange, a few things would happen. Pricing power will flow to the BRICS. We can expect more de-dollarization across global trade as well. When it comes to China's economy, it is both collapsing and recovering at the same time. You need to look at both sides of the coin, especially if you want to invest or you're investing in the country. And here's a great example. Property prices in China are starting to crash below the household disposable income. And that's the black dotted line here. Even home prices in first tier cities like Beijing are collapsing fast. It's getting affordable for people in a hurry. The more affordable homes get, the more disposable income you have to spend elsewhere. So the property collapse does have a silver lining. It is strengthening household consumption in the long term. And let's conclude on the global battle for resources because everything is going to get worse as well. It can be all traced to oil, gas and minerals. And this struggle is only going to get uglier because the West and Russia-China can no longer play nice. The trust is already broken, more or less forever broken. This is a battle for survival now. But let me know what you think. Is the grains exchange a good idea? Will China collapse further or is the recovery already underway? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.